What up, what up, what up, sexy people? I hope you have had a wonderful weekend into the week. Going, to, Damn, we're about to go into another weekend. It's Wednesday already. I'm Nikki yeah. Gilbert Daniels, and this is She Speaks Live. I want to take the opportunity to introduce some of my amazing, incredible, illustrious, intelligent, uh, smart-ass panelists. First up, let's give it up for Miss Funky Dineva, a.k.a. Q. Lathan. <laughs> And Everybody. shout out to Funky Dineva because he has when when we say power of influence, honey, I done got all kind of YouTube followers and whatnot. So thank you for all of that love, Quentin Me. Latham, aka Miss Funky Dineva. And next up, we got Miss Stacey J. Johnson, just date girl. She just got off of a wonderful conversation with a very powerful influencer in uh, the church world or just i guess in general so we're gonna talk a little bit about that and then of course our resident millennial with her glass of what's that chevy cabernet chevy Shed. <laughs> <laughs> and christine Beatty is here she is just not on the line at the moment but she will be back but in the meantime what it do sexy people i hope you are watching from she speaks live.com i hope you are watching from youtube i hope you are watching from facebook uh what's up facebook we i know that on facebook do y'all have a lot of um like high school friends and aunts and, and people like that mm -hmm. i do on, on facebook it's more like high school reunion kind of yeah, like and, and, and family reunion and, all that stuff. and family reunion like cousins and aunt oh my aunt let me have it oh my auntie let me have it about something that i posted she called me to let me know she was not happy i was like <laughs> okay auntie i'm sorry but anyway uh <laughs> Quentin, mm -hmm. seriously, in all seriousness, thank you so much for showing love and posting our chat from last week on your YouTube channel. Everybody loved it. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about it. Go and talk about it. What they had said, what the people say. <laughs> Everybody loved the panel. They, um, if you go back and read the comments, it's got several thousand comments. I think the last time I looked at it, it's got like 57,000 views or something like that. Like, wow. I can tell you. I can tell you. And, and, the, and the beautiful thing about it is, Nikki, for it to have that many views and for it to have been as long as it was, it meant it kept the crowd engaged. That oh, it's got 59,000 views. Wow. 59,000 wow. views on YouTube. <laughs> yes. Wow. Y'all well, keep y'all keep on uh, watching because I'm getting close to my little monetization. See, YouTube done got fancy. When you somebody like you and Miss Funky Daniva, <laughs> you get paid from YouTube all the time. But um but, uh, I had to get like, to a like a certain number of hours. hours. What is that? Right. Explain that Q. How does that go? Um so before at, at one point they were just letting anybody you could just sign up for YouTube just like an email address and you instantly got, got monetization. But now They've got a small screening process. You got to get a thousand subscribers and X amount of hours before they give you the opportunity to monetize. I guess to weed out those who are serious about, you know, right. building, uh, building uh, yeah, those who aren't, those who are wasting space. Um, but you've got an excellent product here, and based on the the comments and the reviews from our previous show, or, or at least the show that I was on, um, you got a money maker right here. Ooh. <laughs> oh Lord! Look, I heard that, and I'm on now. I heard money maker. Uh, ah! you up. Oh, Chris, you on now? Wait, 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 wait. Let's get Chris. Let's get Chris. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. I heard he said that you got a money maker. I'm, I want you to do that. Yes, ma'am, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my Detroit sister, Christine Beatty. Excuse me tonight. This is called rain all day here. So uh, you know your hair looks great. Chris. You. It looked really good. It looks, oh, thank you. Okay. It looks, I was gonna think I was gonna say bed head. You're giving me a lot of like yes. fresh face. Well, I, I just got, you know, one of my sexy man kind of you know what I'm saying. Well I you know didn't, but okay, we'll take that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, we were talking, Chris. What we were talking about was um, Quentin posted us on. Am I? Am I getting feedback? Uh oh. Is that it started when Christine came it on. So did. Okay. Turn my phone. Let me turn this down. My phone is not on or anything. Okay. It's better now. Okay, we good. It's better. Is now. that better? Yeah. Yep, it's much better now. Um, so we were talking about the fact that Q put the video on his YouTube channel. 
Mm. And the views have been like, it's what, 59,000, almost 60,000 views. And what we're talking Mm -hmm. about on the monetization thing is now YouTube, it used to be where YouTube, you just put it up there, you can get monetized, you get your little check Mm -hmm. from advertising. And now you have to have a certain number of hours and a certain number of subscribers before they'll let you do it. So now I'm like getting up to my hours and my subscribers and things. Wow. Yeah. So I really, really appreciate that. You are a great content creator. So whether it's me or somebody else, you know, you got here or a new team, you know how to create content, Nikki. You know what's up. For real. Hey, I'm trying every single solitary day. Speaking of which, let's talk about content. Mm-hmm. Anybody watch the Housewives reunion? Oh, oh, yes, no. oh yeah, I did. I, I didn't see the I thought, second one. I saw I the first some one. of it. What'd you That's say, you? Why is it that all the ugly bitches always want to come for the pretty girl? Did that that what Ken, when, Ken, when Kenya told them that? <laughs> Kenya said that? Kenya yes. said to Marlo and, and Nene Nene. directing it to she, she, said, basically, she said that Nene looked like what? The white, white woman in drag. A white woman. White chicks in drag. <laughs> and Nene said, bitch, fuck you with your bad skin. <laughs> I know you That's really the only skin. thing they can say about Kenya. But you know what? Looks bad skin. So, it got gutter. So you know what? So I just have to say this part. So we all have a guilty pleasure, right? So I right. think housewives tend to be like it's like our soap opera. You remember back in the mm-hmm. day when our parents used to watch the soap? All in the mm-hmm. you remember sitting in front of the TV watching the soaps. You know, for I watched Ed of the Night, Young and the Restless, <laughs> oh my God. all my children. Right. Yeah. So I was no, see, I was CBS. That's ABC. I ain't I ain't do ABC. Other than General <laughs> Hospital with Luke and Laura, that's it. Oh that's yep, General I Hospital. Know my story. But, Poor Charles. Right. Poor Charles. But, but it's kind of so I look at them like that. The problem that always gets me is I'm like, oh, wow, these black women got to sit here dogging each other like that. It's, 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 that's the only thing that I get it. But what's funny is when I watch it now, when I saw them on the, the doing it virtually, I hollered. For I me, it was comedy. Relief. I was like, I ain't really on the computer. It's crazy. Closing the computer down. It's crazy. And Andy is living his best life because he got some women on there. You know what? And I'm trying to decide. I was I watched off and on this season because I think, you know, they're making money. I used to be like, nah, nah, nah. But I'm like, at the end of the day, shit, what else is there? Speaking of content, do you think people want to watch anything different? No. Real yeah, talk. I do. I do. You do, Chevy? That, because they're, they're like, one that one of the comments under Funky Donnie was um, video said, um, "I'm so tired. The Real Housewives is so played out. No shade. The mm-hmm. Real Housewives is so played out. I'm so happy that you guys are producing this uh, show. I, oh, that, wow. that, 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 really? We got, yeah, go look at that. It was great. Well, people say people say they're looking for good content. People always say they're looking for great content, and then you put some shit on TV that's like not." Drama and fighting twenty four hours a day, and you know it's a whole other thing. Stacy, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I the Real Housewives of Atlanta. It's my guilty pleasure. I mean, I I, I kind of know what I'm getting when I go to it, so I don't expect it to do anything else outside of that. I mean, if I want to look at right. quality dramas, I might look at pre, what is it? Pretty Little Lies. What is the one with um? Um, Carrie Washington. Yeah, Carrie oh, Washington. Wait a minute. You talking about Carrie Washington and Reese Witherspoon? Uh huh. Yeah. Little flyers everywhere. No, oh, one mm-hmm. of them is, is Pretty good? Little Lies. One of them is Pretty Little Lies, and then Little Fires Everywhere. Oh. If I'm looking for quality TV, then I know what where to go. But the Housewives serve the purpose. I mean, if you want, if you just want that kind of programming that night, I'm not mad at it. Everybody has a guilty pleasure. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. You know. Well, Nikki, you. back back to your question. I remember when uh, Evelyn came under fire for slinging that champagne bottle across the thing, and then we had this whole debate about black women in reality TV, and and but this is what people want, and you know, I I've arrived at the conclusion that um, people lie, numbers don't. And what does it say about our culture, the fact that um, a love in hip-hop, a basketball wives, a 
a Housewives of Atlanta will get more viewership than let's per se, mm-hmm. let's say like one of the reality TV shows on OWN. Um, it says that people want it. Um, yes, it does. It yes, says it does. that people want it. You know, we 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 like it, and and I tend to think that I am part of the intellectual upper crust. But I'm not gonna lie, I do like watching it, and I yes. think uh, I think it makes me feel good about the bullshit that I got going on in my <laughs> right. life. Right, you watch the shit like crazy. It's crazy. It's it might worse. be like that bad, right? <laughs> but you, you know, know what? It, to that point, when you talk about that. Because, I, like I said, it is funny to me. Like, I feel like I'm watching something that's scripted. But we know it's not. We know it's reality TV. But my point is, I, I mean, t- when you said that, it's funny because I do like watching. It doesn't necessarily make me feel better or worse. But what it does do is take me away from whatever's going on. Yeah. And I can get into their stuff and say, I can't believe she did that. Are you yeah. kidding me? So, yeah. you know, it, it's that kind of thing. Like, and even some of the stuff. That I, that I watch, I think why that whole, you know, not I think why, we don't, we always know that it's so hard for black women to punch through and find good quality things on television. I think mm-hmm. that's opening up more and more and more. We have pushed the boundaries, you know, more and more television shows are coming up and understanding that kind of black women are the dynamic that hold television down a lot of times. Baby, because, you better know it. So they're creating all kinds of content for us. With that said, I think people are looking like, are these role models to our children or is this? But okay, so that's back on us as a society. Are we creating role models? Like, don't let your kids watch Housewives of Atlanta to be the role models. Like, that's not what right. this is. But this even, is, this is not what that is. This is for black women to laugh, joke, trip out, you know, throw mm-hmm. shade, do all the little stuff that people do in their human everyday lives. Mm-hmm. I think that's where people miss the boat. You can't take it too serious. Yeah. If you're taking it yeah. serious, so, you don't need to watch it. Yeah. So then, let me ask this question. Go ahead, Chevy. Go ahead. Because um, at the end of the day, when I'm when I'm looking at the house, like yes, they're bickering. Yes, they're going through what normal people go through in everyday life. But the show also shows that these women, these black women who are at these prestigious stages in their lives are able to get over that bullshit and come to back together and and continue to move on. So yeah. yes, it's ratchet. Yes, it's ratchet. Yes, it may be showing um, the downside of black culture sometimes, but it also shows that we can also reconcile. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I, I agree that it is just entertainment and it's something that you know is a guilty pleasure for a lot of people. I definitely agree with that. Where I start to get a little concerned is when we start talking about the images that white people don't see of black people until they're watching us on television, right? Right. And then it starts to trickle over into corporate America. They expect that there is an archetype or a stereotype of black women because they see every one of them on TV sucking their teeth and rolling their eyes and throwing shade then does that impact our ability in, in the real world? Because there are people right. who really only see us. They don't live in our neighborhoods. They don't go to our schools. They don't shop at our grocery store. And they damn sure don't go to our clubs. Where else do they get their definition or idea of a definition of who we are other than? I guess my thing is, why does it always have to connect to something else? Why does one demographic of Black woman, meaning, or not even demographic, one activity, one choice to roll her neck, snap her neck, um, snap her fingers, roll her neck, whatever it is. Why does it have to then melt over into then judging how we react in corporate America? There are plenty of Caucasian, there are plenty people that I see act out of being just, I, I, I guess I just get so frustrated with when we go into this conversation of the do choices see, of the real housewives of like Atlanta you- have something to do with corporate America and the woman at Coca-Cola. And then we get so pulled into the discussions of why is that so? It's, it, 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 I mean, I, I just, I hope, I mean, I, if we go there tonight, that's fine, but it's just a conversation that's draining. It's been done before. Um, I say let's just push forward and, and, and talk about something else. I know it's not my show, but it just seems like here we go into every uh, just because I'm a black woman and I snap my fingers and I roll my neck on housewives. That means that in corporate America, 
I'm that same person. Yeah, I might still snap my neck, snap my fingers and roll my neck in corporate America. So what? Well, I, I, think, Stacey, you, I think you raised a good point, which is why does this one show have to define us? We're many things. We are people right. that like, what? Are you kidding me? But I And I can know, still do that in corporate America. Say, but I also I, can go into a corporate setting and speak, you know, intellectually and sit with heads of state or whoever I need to, heads of networks and anybody else. So I, I totally agree with that sentiment. Like, I, I, why do we have to fit in this box? Um, of, oh, wow, this defines our black women. No, it does not. Because, and just like I said, thanks to the fact there has been such a push, there are a mm -hmm. lot of images on television of black women now. And I thank God for that. I thank God that my yes. kids grew up in an era of a Michelle Obama, a Kerry Washington, a yes. Viola Davis, a, you know, we ain't have Angela Bassett. Yes. So you think it's, so, so you're saying in a nutshell, it's okay that those images are probably ninety percent. That Why those are probably ninety. What I'm saying is that all of us. I don't see all of us on TV. I see a monolithic. Nikki, you really can see say right now in twenty minutes. And you don't see all of us on TV. What I'm saying Christine, is, I think you the can say that you don't see I all think of us I'm, I'm at. Oh, you asked me a question. I'm trying to answer it. Yes. Okay. I'm saying that I think the representations of who we are as a whole, generally speaking, that's the reason why when we all said we watch Housewives, it's a guilty pleasure. Now, Housewives mm -hmm. is probably the least ratchet of, of a bunch of what's on TV. Right? Absolutely. Right. The yes. least ratchet. I don't think Housewives is ratchet. I think it's shady. You know what I'm saying? Which yes. is a different thing. Yes. So I'm not, when I, when I go into the conversation, I'm not necessarily having Housewives as a flagship example. There's that feedback again. But Housewives isn't the, the flagship example of what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that at some point, we have to stop saying it's just entertainment. Let it go. Let it be okay that I, you know, I never baby said it's just baby entertainment. I, so I, what are you saying? You're, you're over it. I'm what, saying what that for that me. No, I'm saying that I I don't know what TV I'm looking at, but on the TV that we have now in 2020, I see various level, various different shades, colors, shapes, sizes of black women, different personalities being represented. I I see a plethora of a colors of us as black women represented. I think the conversation of us just being in a box is a comfortable conversation to have because it's been had before. But at the end of the day, I see from uh, from um, uh, we'll Carrie exactly. Washington. I'm sorry, I was stomped by her name. I'm talking Carrie about docu series television. I'm not talking about scripted. TV because obviously a white oh, person is not going to look at obviously theory. a white person because is not going to look at scandal and be like that damn Olivia Pope Kerry Washington lady I don't like her they're going to well, know that I, Olivia I Pope know. is a character that's fixed that was written for television what I'm saying is when we you're say reality okay, so TV specific. you're talking about reality I was TV. very specific no, you never specific. said reality TV. You said okay. the various co yeah. Oh, so if you're saying reality TV, no, there's not a lot of people that's going to turn on television looking at a uh, looking at black women who aren't yelling, screaming, fighting, pulling wigs and stuff and like that's that. My, and reality. That's my point. Can and I, honestly, I we know we know that reality TV that's just what it is. We produced Nikki reality TV, which j did just that. I was on a show that, although it started out one way. There was a way from the bottom up ended up where producers did want to see us go at each other. What? Period. Where? Point blank. Well, how? Let's open up the floor. We opened it all the way up. Let's open it all the way up because you just said that. Yes. How and who and when did producers <laughs> intentionally? Can I Go ahead. Can I on that? Please, well, Christine please, was there. Please. Yeah. So what I was going to say is this, Nikki. I, um, I, so we're talking about just reality television. Absolutely not. There's not a lot of content that shows. Exactly. I agree with that. I And I, I like Stacey, and I will say this, also thought you were talking about television in general. Yes. But let me say, whether we're talking about television in general or reality television, we can never get comfortable to say that there's enough representation behind the screen, on the screen. Please don't mistake okay. what I'm saying for that, because we right. can never get comfortable. We I always agree. have to keep pushing to have our voices heard, our stories told every time. So that's the first yeah. thing. Yeah. We talk about reality television. I was so happy to be a part of From the Bottom Up because you were the producer. 
So I'm, and again, this is Christine speaking for me. Yeah. Yeah. You, when I when you and I spoke, your thing was I want to tell a real story. I'm not into yep. editing certain comments and applying it to something different and taking situations and make make it seem like they happened somewhere else. That was your word to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, as we got further into from the bottom up, we got to season two. As you know, the network wants yep. fireworks. The yep. network wants controversy. The network yep. wants conflict. Yep. So while certain people are probably Stacey is an actress by trade. So Stacey can bring drama to the scene when it when she ain't really no drama. Right. So yeah. not to say she was acting in the from the bottom up. She was still living her real life, but she knows how to ratchet it up. I don't. That's not what I do. I'm the way I'm talking not right now, as you know, Nikki is how I talk. Yeah. Off yeah. camera <laughs> when I'm on camera. Right. Say right. communicate on the phone. I'm talking the exact same. So there's nothing there. When I lost faith and from the bottom up and where I said, I'm sorry, I gotta step on out was during season two. When they taped the whole conversation, I think it was a me, Crystal, Kim, and somebody else, I can't remember. But the conversation was brought up about Stacy's mother. And yep. I vehemently said, if you air that, I'm not, I'm walking off the show. So for mm. me, and say, hey, Nikki, you remember, I called, we had a conversation, and you was like, yeah, I don't like that either. And that's what I'm saying. You as a producer... Oh, Nikki as a producer, one thing. No, no, at you, a certain did, level, you did a show and producers did X, Y, and Z, so I just wanted to clear it up for the people no, watching. No, 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 not so Nikki. They know hold I on, hold on. Yeah, no, 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 I'm talking okay. about the producers okay. who had the creative control of the show at one Wait, point. but that's not, nobody, so this is the point. No one had more creative control on From the Bottom Up other than myself and Flavor Unit. So let's be clear, the network was, this was a licensed show, right? This was an acquisition. So while you, I want you to be clear, Stacey, because you're saying certain people. So I don't want anybody calling me because you said certain people wanted certain things. Okay, so I can I clear yeah, that up. For me, up. my experience, absolutely. Nikki, I mean, I support Nikki. Nikki is amazing. Nikki creates amazing content that I'm always happy to be here, including this. But I can't, I just, I mean, I'm an open book. The truth is the truth. After getting involved over a certain time, there was the network and then there was Nikki. And then there were producers who were trying to make situations happen that really weren't there or they were playing, they were instigating situations that could have not been what they were. And that's just what it is. And Nikki, as creator of the show, there's a certain amount of power after the creator of the show that you have to give the flavor units and all of that because it is a Queen Latifah brand. But At the end of the day, those brands that think, brand But that's what I'm saying, and that's what I don't want to get into because I don't think that Queen Latifah um, wanted to see anything like that. Like that. I'm not I saying I, I never spoke to Queen like Latifah. That. All I can and say is, and I don't think is, anything like that aired. I don't think there was all ever I can a situation say is, where you there were was instigating or, happening. Mm -hmm. There was instigating happening, and certain situations they were people wanted us to turn up. I, and maybe that's why maybe we should just move on. But it wasn't Nikki Gilbert. Absolutely not. Well, and let me. But I want to add one last thing to that, and we can move on. It wasn't just a turn up thing because I'm not going to act outside of my character. I'm going to act how I always act, period. That's probably why I'm not good for reality TV. People say I'm bored. That's cool. I'm with it. But the side, the side from that is this. Where I took offense, Nikki, is there was a time when they took comments and something that I said on the show in one scene and applied it to something different that I did, was not even talking about. That's where then I take issue. I, I can right. always stand up for myself. You're going to do live, you're going to cut the scene just as I said it. I'm with it because I'm never going to back down from something that I said. Right. If I'm wrong right. or hurt somebody, sure. But if I've said it, I meant to say it on television and anywhere else. Right. But my point was where I took issue is you you take my words that I'm talking about in one situation and you, you're going to clip it into something else that creates something that's not there. Now you've lost me. I'm yeah, that, and that's not okay. That's and if, if 
And if both, I obviously wasn't on set for every scene. Right. Um, it wasn't so, you. This wasn't you. But if I We're felt, but if, stuff that you didn't no, no, even know. Okay. I know there were things that I didn't know. That's why I'm like, damn, we talking about it on live. So I need to make sure I clear it up because my right. brand is definitely not, hey, piss this person off. Now I understand if something is going flat or if we need a little bit more excitement or whatever the case may be, that's one thing, but yeah. Okay. So we're beating this dead horse. Got it. Get it. I just wanted to make sure that people knew that I'm not no. creating that kind of TV. It is I not Nikki Gilbert. A hundred percent. Okay. No. All right, Q. Bring what us out of this. I love that, man. Q Fakes is like, what are y'all doing? Going back to, to, to TV, I'm going to close this out and I guess segue us into another piece of content when it comes to TV. I was, and I was just going to say, in closing, we've got to remember that the television business is not the TV business. It's not the entertainment business. It is actually the advertising business, right? Mm, and right. it is. We call it TV entertainment, but it's really the advertising business. Yes. The people who go into business of making television, they can care less than the hell about content and about how much money they can get out of Procter and Gamble and everybody else advertises their programs. Unfortunately, it's created a situation where people are positively rewarded for bad behavior because yeah. the more box you throw, for whatever reason, more people tune in, we get more ratings, you get a bigger paycheck, we yeah. get bigger advertising dollars, yeah. and that has just now become the nature yeah. of the beast. Producers and television have yet found proven way to show that anything else other than conflict can make yes. the same type yes. of money. Now, once somebody can come to the table and do a gardening show or a show about two people wrapping gifts and baking cakes, <laughs> and, it right. makes and people into it, then that's, then that's going to make money, right. So then we're going to have 19 shows doing the same thing. Right. I have to ask this question. Um, oh, oh. I'm dead. <laughs> Lucia said, Lucia Ash, who's another executive producer on From the Bottom Up, said, hmm, question mark. Would love to know what Christine and Stacey are talking about. Because we're both oh, lost. Problem. So, so we'll, 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 we'll talk offline. Stella, we'll, I, I bring up the clip. I got it on tape on my DVR. So I'm sure not a problem. <laughs> she, yeah. Girl. So we didn't. And, and the other thing is, you know, I, I, I y'all either didn't come to me because you ain't want to stress me out as a friend or whatever. But if y'all would have been like, we flat, have so like, much stuff going on. No, no, no. But when there there was a little tricky situation with that whole Inquirer cover and, and, and tethers on the ankles yeah, no, no, and all no, that this, shit yeah, went I, all the way off. I will go to that. And the reason this is a little sensitive for me is because there are women who have been a part of that show. I'm going on ahead and say who have been like, oh, you didn't have my back and such and such and such and such. And I'm like, I didn't know. What the hell are you talking about? You know, which That's is why, why we never said me. you, Nikki. Right. That's okay. why we never Nikki, said you. We and, said and, network so and producers who were yeah. usually there with us. It has not. Right. It, it, and I was actively involved in the show, but just other shit was happening. Nikki. Yes. Somebody, Nikki, being somebody who's walked now two television shows from concept to, to airing, did you not feel any um, unspoken downward pressure to have something that was conflict driven in order for entertainment value. Did you not feel that pressure? You know what? Um, I have always feared shows being led in that direction and always in the back of my mind tried to figure out ways like in the case of, let's just go on and say it, R&B mother diva. Mm -hmm. The whole point was, if you cast big personalities, if you cast people who have things going on in their life that are interesting and that are going to say it and what's real speaks to the heart and all that shit, you don't have to manufacture the bullshit. And I think mm -hmm. that in R&B Diva season one, that's what we had. But then mm -hmm. it started turning into, we need to turn this more into housewives. We need to make this, this, or this, that. And it fell completely yeah. apart. That's the conversation yeah. Angie, I, someone sent me a clip of a conversation Angie Stone and Selena. Johnson just had a couple days ago where they said the same exact thing, right? So, yeah, I do fear situations where networks are like, oh, this is boring or this isn't interesting enough. And there were moments with From the Bottom Up going into the third season was hell because people were upset with me because they felt like I didn't fight hard enough for them to stay on the show 
But yeah, there were people, and I'm not pointing fingers at the network because you know I'm still trying to do business with these people and get it to the point where we could do content we ain't got to sell <laughs> right. our souls for. Right. But yeah, I think there Christine were people came back, didn't come back voluntarily. We well, asked, you, no, right. It, I'm so not you can about figure Christine it out yourself, people. I'm not talking about Christine and Stacy. I'm talking about other people, other cast members on the show, because the network wanted to do something you know, younger, slightly younger demo, you know, slightly edgier. And the network they wanted, wanted some dollar. stuff. They wanted, they wanted the almighty dollar. I mean, let's face it, anybody yeah, right. who creates a reality TV show, they want housewives numbers. And in order to get housewives numbers, you have to do housewives things. Numbers just don't lie. People do. These right. other situations. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to say, because I, I know we're going to end it. I was not mad at season three. I watched it as a viewer. I actually loved the people that were on yeah. season three. I thought they had very compelling um, story because yeah. the show was supposed to be about people who experienced tragedy, trauma, and rebuilding their lives. Those yeah. women that were on their show experienced tragedy and trauma yeah. Yeah. and were rebuilding their lives. So I felt like they all had a great um, storyline and a great kind of you know, opportunity to share that. So I wasn't mad at season three. Like Stacey said, I, I said I'm backing out voluntarily. But again, even if they had cut me, which I, they probably would have, I'm not entertainment on television. And I'm okay with that. It's good. I wouldn't have taken offense. There was an opportunity presented to me. And guess what? I took it. It was at a time. And not only that, I mean, it was, it was your story being attached to this show was part of what sold the show. So it's well, not about, it wasn't about entertainment. It was really about people who really overcame right. obstacles and were starting their lives over from top to bottom, back to top. And, you, and it gave me, it gave me a platform to help do that, Nikki. That was the thing for me. It was an opportunity. It helped me to rebuild. It helped me give me, it helped give me income at a time when I didn't have one, when I'm trying to rebuild my career. I'm not in entertainment and television. I'm like, okay, how am I going to make money? So from the bottom up, help me. It was a bridge for me to yeah. be able to regain what I needed to do. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to you, Lucia, the network, my castmates. You know, again, it was an experience for me. Everybody gets into reality television for different reasons. That was mine. Yeah. And I could say that, yes, I am an actress and I but the turn up got so far for me, hateful outside of the show to where I just it wasn't worth it for me at the end. And then the thing about just pushing with my mother and all that stuff when my mother, everyone knows, is my before beginning, middle and end. And she's in heaven. That was just too much of a low blow for me. And it just wasn't worth it. I still needed the money and I walked away. I really needed the money. But I was like, well, I honey, can't talk about walking away from a coin. I walked away from <laughs> Baby, yeah, quite a few of them. <laughs> as it so, and, and walked away, Miss Funky Dineva Ross, bitch, was not fired, walked away. But anyway, <laughs> Lucia said to remind everybody before we get off of this that from the bottom up, seasons one, two, and three are now available on Xfinity. So, <laughs> if you want to know what we're talking about. We got to plug that show. And I and, and another thing to add to this real quick before we jump off of this subject, Q, you know what? I, I, I'm working on a new show. It's going to be the shit. Um, yes, I think it it's going to be so much better. Than, right, Chevy? Right, right. Um, and it is going to do what we're saying or what many people don't think can be done, which is allow women to share their stories and be positive and uplifting and full of drama and, you know, excitement and all that other stuff, but also not, you know, degrade us and, and take us back. So it's, it's going to work. I'm determined to get a damn show. And we may not see Housewives numbers because that's a whole, that's a thing. You know what I mean? They, but but we will do, we, we will do well. I'm claiming that. I will say this too really quickly. Our own, the own network has created a nice safe space for shows like that to exist without the expectation of Housewives performance, but the performance that is in line with what those with types network. of shows are. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the, the cleaner reality TV, it is a very niche market, but it's a market nonetheless. And the own crowd has proven that there is a home and a desire for it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Nikki, let me tell you, yes. I told you, uh, I told you last week to talk to yourself nicely. 
Okay, so stop saying we may not do housewife numbers. We may what? Stop okay. doing that. Okay, thank okay. you, baby. You're yes, absolutely right, Chevy. Chevy. You're right. Uh, That's uh, why I love my Chevy. You're 100 percent right. Uh, uh, we will we will entertain the people, which is the most important yes, thing. Yes. So well, Wendy I'm Williams. Let's talk about Wendy Lavoris Williams. That's not her real middle name. I just made that shit. Wendy Lavoris. So what is going on with Wendy? Who wants to take this? So she's she's no longer doing her show. And I am, you know something. Wendy probably doesn't even know I exist. Outside that time, she asked Monifa asked if she missed me and she shaded the shit out of me um, oh. on the reunion. But that's another conversation <laughs> for another day. Uh, but when, Wendy probably don't know I exist and don't give a damn. And I, for whatever reason, I just ride for Wendy. Like, I just want her to come through. But she's decided to cancel her show again. And... I've watched a couple episodes of her Wendy from home. Has anybody watched? Is there here and there? Here yeah. and there. You say, have you watched? I'm gonna say out yeah. Yeah, it's okay. hard to watch sometimes. I'm not yeah. Why do you say that? <laughs> um, just because you can tell Wendy, he, she's a performer that feeds off the energy of the audience and people watching. And in her in her kitchen, there's really no one there but her. So. I empathize with the talent who sometimes that's what you need because that's what she's used to. Even if in her radio show, she, it wasn't just Wendy, it was Wendy and two or three other people and in the space with her. And now it's just her. And as talent, sometimes you need that other part. Uh, and I, I, I want to counter that really quickly. Mm -hmm. I was in Candy's play with Shirley Murdoch, right? Okay. Yeah. Murdoch, and you were good and too. Shirley, I saw that. And Shirley Murdoch gave me a piece of advice that changed my effing soul. Going to that feeding off the audience. So we did a matinee show in Savannah. And when we got off the stage, everybody was backstage like, oh, you know, the audience was dead. So I didn't really perform that good because the audience wasn't giving me nothing. Shirley Murdoch pulled me by my coattail and said, let me tell you something, young buck. Mm. The people at 12 o'clock pay their money the same way the same as the way. people at 8 o'clock do. It is never the audience's yep. fault. You have to yep. give the matinee show people the yep. same show you Absolutely. give the night show people. So to Absolutely. that point, it, uh, Wendy, that ain't no excuse. You've been in the game long enough. They pay you top dollar to show up even with an invisible audience. Yeah, you have right. to your ass. You had and Nikki as a performer. I'm sure you performed in front of two people and you performed Listen. in front of 200. Thousand. You have to give them the show. Yeah. You have to give them the show. So, Q, to add to your point of what Shirley Murdoch told you, literally, before I got my gig with Tyler Perry, there was a play called Will a Real Man Please Stand Up? Mm. And I think that was called, was it called Will a Real Man Please Stand Up? No, it was another title. I'm sorry. But long story short, the producer of the play was cool with Tyler. So mm -hmm. we went to Dotham, Alabama. I'll never forget. They sold no tickets. When I say no tickets, it was like a 1,500 seater. There was wow. nobody in the audience. No, There was like maybe eight people in the audience. So they called wow. us to the back and they were like, listen, we haven't sold any tickets. Mm. Um, we're not going to be able to pay you for this. You can mm. either go on because we're here and perform or you cannot perform and we'll just figure it out. But we hope that you perform. Well, the bulk of us performed. Didi was in the play. Monifa was in, Didi McKinney was in the play. Monifa was in the play. Um, another woman by the name of Kimberly was in the play. So we go out there and we perform like it's 1,000, 1,500 people out there. How about after the show, Tyler Perry comes up. You, 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 can y'all come here with me for a second? Hey, what's up? I watched the show. You were amazing. That's how I landed Vera Brown. Wow. That's how I landed the That's role so of Vera Brown performing in a studio, I mean, an audience of eight people that seated probably wow. 1,500, and Tyler Perry was one of them. So what Shirley Murdoch told you was absolutely the truth. I don't I care. Think, you don't know what that one or two people had to do to pay for them tickets, and they yep. deserve the show. No, and I, I believe that, but I believe Wendy, on the other hand, is used to certain things. So I don't, and I don't believe she's not intentionally doing it. I just think for that to be an excuse. I just think it's hard for her. To, I just, 
I don't know what's going on. I just think it's hard for her to pull it out of her because she, yeah, you can tell, or either she's retreated and said, I don't want to do this. You, you know what yeah. I think? I didn't mean to cut you off. I think that she was trying to go the whole, I'm at home, so let me do the laissez faire homegirl. Mm. And it's gotten just a little too relaxed to the point where it reads lazy. Yeah, you know I think she, she needs her audience. She yeah. needs the ah. Uh, she needs that lady. What's the lady who be leading them at the ah's? Yeah, the white lady. Yeah, oh, <laughs> she needs her. <laughs> because on another angle, the real who they're all at home. I'm very still much entertained by them. I'm even more Me entertained. Me too. I've heard yeah, people say that. Yeah, they're more it's entertained because they're more relaxed and probably less produced. So and some I, and they are absolutely are. Yeah. They are less, less produced, produced. And it yeah. makes a huge difference. Yep. I totally agree on that one. Yeah. 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 So I think- I'm scared for Nikki though, because you know, I, I have a philosophy, especially when you when you're paid what she's paid, never let them know that they can do it without you. Okay. Ooh. So like if they if they mess around and put something else in that time slot, or they call in somebody else to fill in for her. Or whatever they choose to do during these times, you might fuck around and and lazy yourself out of a damn job. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Or is you it know? that she's being lazy, lazy, or is it that she just um needs to steal your audience? Gail King, Good Morning America is running just fine from their homes. <laughs> Wendy can do Gail King gets up, she gets dressed, she cleans her house, she has a nice backdrop that's well lit. To be honest, when I watch Good Morning America from home, I can't even tell their home. So I would have assumed that Wendy would have done that. I would have assumed she would have had Norman, that white lady, and 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 Morel come do her makeup, and she would have had a four-man skeleton crew from her house. She got the money, make them bitches live there. Make them go and tell what else. You know what else you just reminded me of? I think too because that kitchen is so damn dark. Dark. That it's kitchen unique. is. You know what? I believe that. Oh my God, Stacy, you hit the nail on it. I don't even watch Wendy Williams. I'm not a Wendy Williams fan, but I saw a clip of her on something. I don't know what it was, and I was like, why is the background? Like a vampire. Yeah. yeah. Where her, she had a Betty Boop yeah. or something. It, like it that. looked like she look. had a damn rummage sale, all that shit in the background. Clean that junkie yeah. ass. Yeah. I think if her setting is, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's so dark. Yeah. She needs a green scheme that says she, she's live. <laughs> <laughs> at 11 o'clock on five. The there there, there was the a way. There was a way Wendy could have done that show with yeah. more energy. I'm sorry, when you got the resources, you got the experience that she's got, it's no excuse. This is no yeah. excuse. It's, yeah, she, a she, she, net, it's a network produced television show. Right. Yes. And in her defense, so in her defense she does reason. suffer from Graves' disease. And she said, well, the press release said that the Graves' disease is the reason why she's you know, um, taking a, a step back. So, well, I'm not going to ever question if that is happening to somebody, their health. So, yeah. And I guess, I, mean, the I, the, health. I guess the Graves disease was the reason her ass was at that rehab, too, huh? Talking about. Oh. Talking about, <laughs> talk about she was just going to visit because she had never went. Uh, oh, girl, bye. Oh, Wendy, no. I guess. <laughs> look, 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 look. Okay. Hey, look, look, look. We can sit here and shame Wendy all night, right? We can sit here and shame her all night. But at the end of the day, that lady kept people relevant. Whether it was shade or whether it was positivity, Wendy Williams kept people getting money in their pocket, whether those people were mad at what she was saying or not. At the end of the day, celebrities need to be relevant, right? So yeah. that's, that was her job. That was her job. She's but, the queen of daytime. She absolutely. she's undeniable. That's why this is so disappointing that you're yeah. taking the lazy way out. You are the queen of yeah. daytime. Queen up. But yeah. we don't know what's going on in her real life. But at the end of the day, she caught she Still caught human. hell. Yeah. She caught hell because she, she's sitting there making all this money, shading everyone else. But when fire comes under her own relationship, she can't talk about it. So she might be taking time off to, to, to work on her own shit. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? 
Wait, I hope she is. So, Wendy, we that's... hope so because go ahead, Chris. No, I was just gonna say, but that's my whole issue with Wendy Williams. I'm sorry, like I said, I was trying to stay out of the conversation because I'm one of those not a fan. I don't mm-hmm. watch her. She don't get my rolls around. I, comes around. Yeah, I can't do it. My thing is, there are some people that I've watched her talk about, and I'm like, really? She's talking about people kind of in their lowest of lows, mm-hmm. and. I mean, it's almost like karma, right? Karma yeah, because everybody be going through some shit when they going through some shit. You don't yeah. know what's the reason why anybody does it. But but I, I get entertainment, but I think yeah. there are sometimes she could have stayed entertaining yeah. and not attack people on the level that she did. I, you can be the queen of the daytime and do all of that. And there was sometimes she threw blows when she didn't have to throw blows. Yeah, because I didn't like that Wendy <laughs> I mean, that Whitney Houston interview at all. That goes That's down. A, I almost didn't mess with her for a long she, time after that. I remember Wendy on radio. So, you know, I'm a I'm a Bay Hive member. People call me because, you know, yeah. I love Beyonce, me and my kids. It's, it's what it is. I ain't shamed. But I remember when Beyonce was pregnant and one of the things in Beyonce's documentary when she was talking about all of the rumors and the lies that were being spread about her, about her sister carried her baby. She really wasn't pregnant. All these shenanigans and Wendy Williams was one of the people who perpetuated that rumor and her voice was heard on Beyonce's documentary. Mm -hmm. That even, that lost me even more. Oh, wow. Right. Oh yeah. If you go back and not the, not like the concert documentaries, I'm talking about the one she did about, you know, having the baby and come all Mm -hmm. that. When she got interviewed, she had the like uh, bun, braid bun on the top. And you saw her face interviewing a lot. Wendy Williams was one of the voices on radio at the time that you heard kind of spread that rumor. And for me, having been through something where the press and the media can pounce, and I get it, you know what I'm saying? When you're in a public life, that's what it is. You're, yeah. you know, you're in government, people are gonna do it, I get it, I, that's not a problem. But for people who don't ask for it or have not done anything to bring it on themselves, that's another level. You're yeah. actually speaking on this woman's birth her child something that she that's had off limits she yeah had that's off limits yeah people have talked really to terribly her. about her too so yeah that's so the that's last thing me. she should be doing i've right. never been a fan of wendy I, she off the air first i heard of it today i'm like strong jay look <laughs> <laughs> okay yes from last week talking about how people do anything for clout and that takes me right back to the comma where clout is also a marketing strategy because that's what Wendy Williams capitalized <laughs> on. Chevy right? bring it back to conversation. Do anything for clout. I guess that I mean there's a point there. Okay. So we really didn't I didn't come up. We we decided to freestyle tonight. So if you are watching us on YouTube, if you are watching us on Facebook, if you are watching us on SheSpeaksLive.com, which is where I hope a lot of y'all are watching us, um, please feel free to join the conversation. If there's something, any questions that you have for any of us, please feel free to ask away. Um, Q, I want to make sure that you know that Lucia said that you were her first choice to host the season two reunion of From the Bottom Up. She made it oh, very, very clear. Oh, yes, she yay. loves her from Q late oh. about that part. Hopefully I can host the first, second, third, and tenth reunion or whatever you and Nikki working up uh, next. <laughs> My name is Fox. <laughs> so Stacy, in the dating space, I watched and supported my friend <laughs> tonight while she interviewed um, Pastor Pastor Bryant. Um, so that was a great conversation. So you want to give us some highlights and some things, some some great things that you picked up from that conversation at all? Um, no, not really. Uh, oh, she's trying to shade us and like not share. Well, it was great. <laughs> it's awesome. And I got, you know, a lot of great information from that. Okay, so then there. Um, <laughs> that was cool. real straight away. Stacey, I'm starting to believe that you're getting a little um, bougie for us. Like, you know, it's just shit you don't want to talk about. You understand? But like, I know this is just a little web series that your friend did, but honey, we got cute Miss Funky Geneva Ross on this motherfucker. I'm going to need you to perk up, drink some coffee, do something. And give us some. No, we just date it, it out. No, we just it date it out. Not that. First of all, Wendy Williams, show up to work, bitch. Show up. Right. Show up. Show up. 
<laughs> yawning and shit. First of all, I did not yawn. That's a lie. I did not yawn. And I'm very excited to be here. I just, yeah, that, that's such, whatever, Nikki. You know that is not the truth. I am very excited to be here. I love She Speaks Live. Okay, well, then let's talk about with... this. Okay, maybe it was just that particular individual. The Mimi okay. Faust thing. Can we talk about that? Whoa. Or no? Oh, wow. That was really big. That was your first time going viral, right? Stacey interviewed yeah. you guys. If you don't know, Stacey interviewed Mimi, Mimi Faust from Love and Hip Hop. And that shit went viral. And what does that mean? Right. How is that translating right. in your world? Well, I can tell you, first of all, something that started off really beautiful ended up being taken in a whole nother direction. The title of the show was Becoming Mimi Faust, Healed and Happy in Her Own Skin. And she shared, we shared everything from about her family, from about the poll situation and explaining that to her daughter one day and how difficult that is as a mother to have to be in that place. But she realizes that she has to do it. You know, mm -hmm. we talked about everything from her love for Stevie and how now she's different now as she's loving Ty. But mm -hmm. then the thing that went viral is the literally towards the end of the show, I said, so what's up next for you? And I said, are you going to stay on Love and Hip Hop until the wheels fall off? And that's when she shared that. And it was more of a... What did she was, share? She, said, she shared basically that, you know, she had to take a pay cut for $150,000 because she refused to bring drama to the show. Yeah. yeah. And and a because of that... Of $150,000? Oh, they're breaking them yeah. off over there on Love and Hip Hop. Okay. Yeah. And because of that, you know, you know, one of the questions the producers asked her was, you know, you sure you and Ty aren't having any problems? And she was mm. like, no, I'm not doing that. And she took a pay cut. And to oh, me... Oh, they wanted her to be, bring drama in a relationship. They wanted her to be yeah. drama. But to me, at the end of the day, her standing on with the show called Becoming Mimi Faust, healed yeah. and happy, to me, that choice was because she's at a different place and yeah. she's not making choices just because of money anymore or yeah. clout, which to me is a beautiful place to be after being on a show for nine seasons. I mean... Yeah, I, but, the, but that it's could like, be the it's one like you thing marry out of somebody, that conversation that you marry went somebody viral. You're overweight, and then you lose weight, and your husband loses leaves you. So you lose weight because you want to be a healthier, better version of yourself. But your husband wow. married a fat girl, and yeah. because maybe he had a bit of a fetish. So that happened to somebody. Somebody talked about that on a couple shows ago. Wow. About the fact that they had a friend who was plus size. And I think Shanita told said, told this story. She had a friend who married a woman who was plus size, overweight, and mm -hmm. she lost weight and the husband wasn't happy. So I like, I say that the same thing with Love and Hip Hop. You got on the show, you know, shower rides and fights and whatever else. And then you evolved and decided that you wanted to do something different. And Mona Scott and VH1 and those people made it clear that that's not what they were looking for. Back to my original conversation about the bullshit yeah. that we have to do in order to yeah. get a check. So good for yeah. you, Mimi. Yeah, yeah. yeah good for Mimi, though. She's receiving a lot of love from that. I mean, from her community and from everyone, the network and everybody else might have something else to say. And I'm not sure about that, but I can say that she's receiving unread her comments. People are really excited good that stuff. she's at this place and just, you know, it's a shame that that's the one thing from that conversation that went viral. Like it was so many other great things in that conversation. Two, two yeah. great points that I want to make. I think the silver lining in all of this is the fact that Mimi's finances are definitely have to be in a place where she can turn down 150 grand, no questions asked. Because I think right. the average person, especially coming into it, you would have been you would have been like, all right, well, I might not can't do no drama with my lady. But let me see if I can pick a fight with somebody <laughs> over here. Because that's that so bad. Is, that's so I, bad. But yeah, you know, and, yeah. And and, and 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 no shade to Mimi, but based on what you did with that shower rod, I'm not convinced that you just so full of integrity. Uh, no, your bank account is just cute right now and you don't necessarily need it. Okay. So that's great. That's the silver lining. Um, number two, not, though, to the point of, you know, them being able to turn down the money and them being paid. Well, let's face it. Reality TV is a very easy damn job, right? You get paid all this money to have dinner and argue with a bunch of bitches. And it has changed a lot of their lives. 
You know what I'm saying? It has changed a lot of their lives. That being said, there is a certain level of loyalty that you must have to the brand that has changed mm. your life. Mm. There is nowhere else in life you're going to go with no tangible employable skills and earn that type of money. So what I'm finding and what I think with Mimi is that age has kicked in, love has kicked in, that FICO score done kicked in, that debt <laughs> done got kicked out, and she's at a point now where she's ready to evolve beyond the show. She's yeah. going to have to leave the show. It's going to phase her out because reality yeah. is a situation. This is a fighting ratchet TV show, and there is no place for love in love and hip-hop. Okay, Ooh. so first of all, I actually, I, I actually worked on a season nine love and hip-hop set. We're just on a hiatus right now due to COVID-19, Okay. Mimi has morals. I've had personal conversations with Mimi Fox. She has morals. There are reasons for her actions, for sure. Um, Mimi is not hurting for money. But at the end of the day, after having conversations with her, she is very happy and she does not want to jeopardize that. She has future endeavors. Yeah. That she wants. She has future endeavors, like her cleaning yeah. business that was that was in place before there was ever a love of hip hop. She has a cleaning business that she's about to take off the ground. Like at the end of the day. There's a reason that she made that decision. And I'm, I root for her. Just like Me Big too, Fish. Chevy. Yeah. Even, Absolutely. Big Fish, Big Fish Entertainment roots for her because that's the actual inter- production company. Big Fish Entertainment is rooting for her because Mimi has contributed her nine years. And if she does yeah. deserve to um, fly, she's happy now. She's, but they're, but they're not going to. I mean, that, that sounds warm and fuzzy. But at the end of the day, if you're not bringing, like Q said, there is no room for love and love and hip hop. It's a franchise that was built on relationships not working. Yeah. But if you look at other hip hop, there are they they do broadcast the reconciliation of that drama. So and then love the next hip-hop. season they drama again. They're not no and and not only love and hip hop. You don't see oh. anybody. Right, right. I mean, Candy and Todd are flourishing, thank God, because they're a great picture of black love, but. Black men get attacked and destroyed on reality TV 24-7. Yeah. I mean, for God's sake, they pulled a gun on my head on R&B divas. And look at the strategic trade-off Candy has. In order for me to have a good marriage and continue to advertise these businesses, I continue to pit my husband against my mom. You know what I'm saying? That that oh, wow. stuff is very intentional. I, the, you, you can't tell me in real in real life Somebody comes home and tells their husband, my mama don't think you're going to take care of my child. So she's going to put my child in a separate wheel because she don't think like, come on. You did that with the cameras rolling for a reason, because you know that your storyline must bring a certain level of drama. And whereas you were not ready to you, you were not willing to fight with your husband. You was like, well, my mama and my husband already don't see eye to eye. Let me go ahead and exploit that a little bit. Wow. Somebody's okay. ass is going exploit it. And at some point, I think it bothers them. Like, um, I think it was, I saw something recent that Nene said she just, the show just takes too much out of her. She can't take it. I don't like, um, they're, I didn't like to see the Braxton sisters kind of going down that road, which I think they're fine now. I just hate, I hate that it happened with her. You saw Kim Kardashian fight with her sister this year. I saw that too, but that was like, that's different though. Like, it, it's different because I mean, but I'd never seen them. I mean, they were flying like I mean, it's this, not, but it I I'd never seen right. Them. I saw it. It was physical. It was a little different it was because physical. they're sisters, you know. But yeah, still. But when you brought up the yeah. Braxtons, it made me think yeah. about because they're sisters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're gonna be fine. But it just seemed like there were moments where it was just like, oh, I feel so bad because I love them. I I just think they're a great group of women. But anyway, okay. So we're beating the real. It's just a shame. But there's so much going on that is reality TV based. Like, I can't stand the fact that, you know, we have these amazing black female doctors and we can't see them like running their practice and birthing children. And like you said, Q, nobody, you know, wants to see us planting a garden. Instead, we have to see them fighting and bucking. And it's like that is, you know, black African-American doctors. You know, but here's so, one thing that I want to point out. Though. Can we appreciate it versus... um. It's acting like it don't exist. Can we appreciate? I don't. I don't know a doctor. Okay, so let's talk about acting like it don't exist. So you're saying okay. that? 
a group black we got five black female doctors in Atlanta. So you're saying we should expect black, a group of five black female doctors to fight the way they do on TV? I'm saying that we should not That's, expect, we should it, expect no, that I'm, as normal. I'm, as being a realist in reality. That ain't reality. That shit is, reality, is, is created reality. by producers. Well, the first I'm thing not, about I'm it, though, Nikki. That, I, get that part. I get that. I get that. I get that the, the producers are going to are going to instigate. You're right, Miss Nikki. I totally get that. But what I'm saying is, it is common amongst general women. I mean, I mean, not general women. It is one, not. It is I do not want to physically fight any of my friends. I don't have <laughs> but the problem with women. is in a reality show. You hang. You got. You have. You are paid to hang out with bitches you don't like. No, period. I'm not, I'm not you gotta to hang out with them, or you don't get paid. <laughs> okay, so when you bring some people together, whether they doctors or whatever, that they don't get paid, and unless they come to set and they got to be on a set, we cut Chevy off. Off. We cut, then uh, what? That's right. what happens. Go I'm ahead, sorry, Chevy. Chevy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chevy. Go ahead, Chevy. If you let I apologize. So what I am saying is, reality is reality. We don't like the fact that we are being exploited as black women. All, all we do is fight. All we do is bicker. All we do is this and this and that. But what the show is, is also, what the show is also showing is that there is, is that there is avenues to reconciliation for the second time. There is avenues to reconciliation. So yes, the producers are going to do their job because once again we're going to take it back to last week of what 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 is clout. So you got to have clout in order to get these ratings that these that these networks want. So there. Are, Clout, but at the end of the day, they're 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 making sure they broadcast that reconciliation. I understand the point of oh, they're exploiting black women. They've been exploiting us since before TV ever was was ever invented. Yeah, so at some point we have to figure out a way to 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 end that kind of exploitation and that kind of damage to our narratives. And I know I ring that bell all the time, and I ring it all the time because I see how what is happening in reality TV affects and impacts our lives every single day in the mm -hmm. real world. And that shit is not real. They're creating scenarios and situations. Stacey, I don't think it always has to be you're in a group of women that you don't like because R&B Divas, we all liked each other. We all spend time together. We all considered each other friends until the manipulation of the producers started to occur. I like and to think then we're not after the only that, you then have to be in a room with people who normally, if things are happening and they're not going well, you just like, I don't have to see that girl. But you had yeah. to go to work to make your check. And then you had to be in this, a situation with someone who you didn't, you no longer were getting along with. That's it, right. still goes. I get that. it. I get it. It's just, it's, it's, it's foul. I get it. It's just foul. I hate it. So, to Nikki and, and, and ladies, so on a deeper it. level, on a deeper level, could part of our frustration be in the fact that we have unrealistic expectations for certain groups of professional women? Yeah. Just because yeah. somebody is a doctor or a lawyer, does that rob them of the? The, the ability or the choice to get mad and want to beat somebody ass. I don't I don't think just because you're a doctor, you shouldn't want to beat a bitch ass. But that, I that's, exactly, that's exactly what I was saying. We had the conversation earlier, Q. We are many things. Mm -hmm. I can be a professional and I can still be pissed enough yeah. to beat your ass. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to constantly pray on my Christianity and say, Lord, remove this from me. I'm because I'm human, because people will take you to a place. The question is, how do we deal with it? How do we recover from it once we cut somebody out or beat somebody's ass and go from there? Right. The other thing that I have an issue with with reality TV, some of these things are, well, I don't, this is my thing with this. Some of these controversies, that's not how people deal with controversy in real life. Right. Nobody. Right throws a drink on anybody at a restaurant. Nobody right. goes to some... I mean, people just don't do that in real life. That's where I take issue with things because the stuff that's supposed to be reality TV is not reality. Mm -hmm, if, mm -hmm. if you threw a drink on me at a restaurant, mm -hmm. there's going to be a brawl. Ain't no producers coming. There's nobody <laughs> to break us up. <laughs> Bitch, I'm going to beat your ass because you threw a drink on me. You Are you fucking drink, drink, Right. Oh, and excuse me for cussing, I'm sorry, but 
But no, man. I mean, really. But where where did the drink throw? I don't even know where the drink throwing shit came from. Like, did that's people throw a drink before reality so, TV? Maybe the soap operas. And five people gonna grab me, and I can't get to you. You throw a drink on me, it's on and popping. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're not yeah. doing that. So you can talk to me like I'm a human, and I'm going to talk to you like I'm human. But what you're not going to do is throw a drink on me or raise your hands to me and pull my hair, and I'm not going to be able to get back to you. Because in reality, there are no producers and security to keep us apart. Yeah. But you know, one thing I also want to interject, and, and I hate this, especially being somebody who studies reality TV for a living, damn near. They always want to bring up the comparison and make it seem like the black women are getting portrayed worse than the white women. And I beg to differ. Me now that I look, at, I look at the housewives of New York, I look at Beverly Hills, Woo! they drunk, they ratchet as well. It's yes. just culturally, they may communicate with one another slightly different than we do. And our means of communication may be considered a little more hostile than theirs, but they, they are equally as riddled with conflict. They equally call each other bitches. They throw drinks equally as fast, and they stay cutting up. So this, I don't know where this whole but narrative. But you don't of, see the thing is too. You don't see. You see that only in one franchise, which is the Housewives franchise, right? You don't mm -hmm. see shows on top of shows on top of shows with little black kids, little black uh, millennials, little black black women. Black. You just every reality show on television with people of color mm -hmm. has the same archetype the mm -hmm. same yeah, stereotype right. every mm -hmm. single one of them and there are tons of them so that's my point when we start talking about well white people doesn't have yeah because white people don't do reality tv outside of the fucking housewives mm -hmm. you're right and they don't do that shit because their husbands and their parents and whomever else is like do it you can listen to all that rap you want in your car with your friends but when you get out you better walk straight we don't do mm -hmm. it in our community it's just, it's cool, it's fun. It's like social media, the same thing. When you look at IG, when you, everybody's an IG model, everybody, I just, and yeah, I'm a little over the top with my shit, like I've said, but I'm so over people thinking the only way we can make a living in entertainment is to clown our fucking asses, ourselves and each other. Could a lot that of it be- some bullshit. Could a lot of it be economic coercion? Just by, by virtue of the fact that absolutely, I, because you have very limited, wow, absolutely, it's what Byron Allen has been talking about for I don't know how long. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, well, if you want this show, go beat that bitch with a bat. Well, if <laughs> you want this show, you and, better be prepared to flip over and, the table. You and, 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 and you have an eviction notice on your door, so you kind of need it, whereas the person who has a little more finances, they have different access, they have options. Money mm -hmm. gives you options. But when you like going back to Mimi with the pay cut, she don't need it. And that's a blessing. But I could imagine if she did, what that conversation in her mind would have been like. I needed my money. In fact, when I went through my lawsuit, I had none. I lost everything. They held my pay for two years. I didn't have shit. Lost my house, my credit, everything. Look but at I you stood now. on my morals and I stood on principle. So when people come to me with that bullshit, I'm just like, um, so yeah, I, all that happened and I lost my best friend in the midst of it. Yeah, and I needed and I my needed money. I every coin. I needed my money. And Stacey, you needed yours. So I really yeah. think that it's a matter of character good, and choosing. Oh, yeah. It's a matter of choosing. And we have to just start doing more of that. Speaking of more Can of that. Can we talk about sex or something? Well, I tried to talk about dating and sex, but no, it's politics. No, Real I quick. wanted to talk. No, you wanted to talk about my okay, earlier well, show. Okay, well, let's talk about sex, Stacey. Yeah, let's sex. talk about sex. Okay. Man, it's been so long. We got a few minutes. It's been so. It's been so long, Quentin. It's like so horrible. Like I'm starting to like look at porn. It's bad. So. <laughs> Considering the fact that you are the love and relationship and sex person, I've got a very interesting debate going on on my IG right now. And I posted a post that says, if he pays for dinner... I was trying to make y'all laugh, but I guess that didn't. Okay, the quote ahead. says... Not if if he laugh, I was cracking up. And oh, okay. this, 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 this is written from a women's point of view. If he pays for dinner, I got the tip. If he buys the movie tickets, I got the snacks and the drinks. If he pays for everything one night, I got the next date. 
It's a balanced relationship. That's how we roll. And so now the, the divide in my Instagram comments are you've got this faction of women who are like, fuck that. I need a provider. Yeah. He yeah. has to pay you all this. Then you got this other faction who are like, well, my mama told me to have your own and pay. Don't ever let a man think he got everything and you ain't doing nothing and this, that, and the third and bring yourself to the table. You being the resident dating person, how do you feel about that 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 tug of war in dating when it comes to finances and where is the balance? And I'm asking this from the perspective of of the man sometimes, despite the fact that I'm a gay man, I think sometimes in the courting situation, women with this expectation of the man paying for everything, men get the short end of the stick. Mm-hmm. One yeah. woman in comment was like for the, for 30 60 days i'm not paying for nothing i'm the mm-hmm. prize and if he want me he's got to prove to me that he can be a provider and so when i flipped the question on her and said okay if that's what he has to prove in the first 30 60 90 days what are your deliverables what is it that you have to prove what, what is it that he can expect that's of you if that's deliverable. Like of and <laughs> she got quiet she was just like you know i i don't have to answer that and i'm just like it can't it Yeah, I think at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves who we want to be and not who we want to be because we were told something as kids. And I think a lot of that, all of that, who I am, what I'm not going to do, what he got to do, what she got to do to be with me. I think that all comes from how we were raised or everything that we saw on TV or what we whatever it is, we were programmed to believe something. I think the best of who you can be in love is to just ask yourself the freaking question. Who do I want to be and why? And really, if you and what makes me happy? And a lot of times it's black people. And I can only say black people because most of the people, are, my clients are black, brown people. Then we never ask ourselves those questions. We just accept what we've been told. And we just figure, yeah, well, my mama told me the man is supposed to pay for every date. Then that's how it's supposed to be. When really, is that really what you feel? Or is that something that you were raised to believe? And that one question, never asking yourself that, is I think the beginning of you becoming the woman that you want to be in love rather than all of what you've been told you should be. And I can tell you for me, I didn't even ask myself back in the day, was I happy with the men I was with? So that's just, and that was the saddest thing ever. that's a good question to ask yourself. I never even asked myself. y'all, we just shut down the server again, by the way. So if y'all are on She Speaks Live, I'm sorry, or you were watching She Speaks Live, I'm sorry, it dropped out again, but Hopefully, when a few people go off, it should come back. I got to pay for a separate server. Sorry. Oh, I'm wow. Sorry. That's a good problem to have, though. That's a good problem. <laughs> Lucia just told me. Okay, wow. can we get into some politics real quick before we get yes. off and have another one? I want a five minute conversation. What is happening in politics right now? Chris, I know that you told me not to do this before, but I did, and I have unplugged. Um, I had unplugged for a while after, um, I think I unplugged after Bernie dropped out um, just because I was COVID focused. What is going on in our world um, as it relates to politics in this moment? Anything? What's going on in our world? is How we looking as Democrats? You sure want to what? How we looking as Democrats? You know what? This is probably the first time in my life when I don't have a feeling one way or the other. What I know is that we are probably the most politically divided in this country. And again, I didn't live back in the days of the Civil War, so I can't say that. But I feel like we're the most politically divided than we've ever been that I've seen in my lifetime. I can speak for me. Um, And. The sad part is that we're not putting um, country first. And when I say country, I don't mean like, oh, I'm the love of my country. I mean the people in the country. I mean Mm. citizens. I mean what's best for us as American citizens. And I think there's so much politics being played Mm -hmm. on both sides that you have um, a void. Of, of true leadership. Now I'm hoping for us because I am a Democrat. I'm a. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm never back down from that. What I'm hoping is that our folks who are in leadership can step up to the forefront and provide a roadmap that um, 
shows a way to kind of recoup. We're right now, our country in general, you know, is so divided that I don't really know how we kind of come together right now. Like, I don't have the answer. I truly don't. Yeah, but what that's I know, crazy. <clears throat> this is where, you know, God, for me, this is, again, I always have to preference, Christine Beatty. And ultimately, love is going to have to take over. Tolerance mm. is going to have to take over. Um, there's going to have to be some sort of a, a movement that pushes us back together because yeah. we are so divided. And I'm hoping COVID is that back together thing. Mm. But you see, it continues to divide us too. I'm not wearing a mask. You can't tell me what to do. It's my civil rights. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, but wait, when Colin Kaepernick took a knee, I'm sorry. So those weren't his civil rights. So we it's so much of, you know, hypocrisy going on from different sides of the coin that I don't know how we kind of find common ground. It's yeah. really to the point where we're divided, where and for me, that's the state of politics. Like the division is huge and something massive is going to have to bring us back together, whether it ends up being COVID or not. We shall see. If COVID, if COVID isn't enough to get everybody on track and seeing how he's reacting to this COVID situation, you know, we we need to hold our breath for four years. Is the president really taking that drug, the hydro, whatever? I think I saw that somewhere. That's he, what he said. Well, that's a report that he's taking it. Um, the problem, and I want to say this: if he's taking it, that's on him. And I'm sure now. This is where I'm, I'm not a, you know, a Trump fan. But what I will say is report it accurately. If he's taking it, I'm sure he's taking it under a doctor's care. He didn't just he have that. He did say my doctor yeah, and I. He didn't so have he it sitting up in the White House in stock and said, hey, you know what? Let me walk down here to the cellar and grab it. Right. But why is he taking it if he doesn't have COVID? I'm, I'm, that's what well, I thought it was. Well, I'm but confused. also, he believes, I'm sure, and I don't know, I haven't read all the reports, and some doctors say it may be a preventative drug as well. Oh, yeah. okay. So, again, what, 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 what I will say, um, that's his choice, but my thing is, whatever is happening as the leader of the country, what you have to do is show an example, right? Yeah. So, my thing is, if that is something that he's doing under doctor's care, just say that I, as a personal choice, decided to take this medication based on what I've read and mm. felt like that this was the best choice for me health wise. Yeah. Because right. people really do listen. You know, all of us sitting on here, we may say, oh, God, I don't listen to Trump. But there are people who yeah. listen to his leadership. Yeah. So responsible leadership is important. It's my point. No matter mm -hmm. who you're listening to. Who I listen to are the CDC experts and scientists and healthcare mm -hmm. providers. And Dr. Fauci. Where, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Fauci. Because that is how I was educated, I was raised. So that tends to be where I lean. If doctors say something, I'm kind of leaning that way. Yeah. And again, that's just, you know, me and my family and how I've raised that. But again, the, the, the issue is the responsibility. If he's going to take that, explain why. Explain why. Explain right. Him. Prescribed it. Explain because that people I'm have died from, from just taking it because he said take that it. I'm taking yeah. it under this doctor's yeah. care. And here's yeah. why. What that about Governor? Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. You about to say Governor Cuomo, my man. I, ooh, honey. I, what you, about Governor Cuomo and Quad? Quad's. Um, Quad going to have to we, fight me because, girl. That what about Quad reaching out to Governor okay. Cuomo about with her long blonde tresses looking amazing, very <laughs> Memphis? Wait, what? What I about her? She child. reached out to him. She posted a whole video she and told him, to come, get this chocolate. "Come get this chocolate." <laughs> That's what she said, basically. Come get this chocolate. Was she serious? Yeah, because he's fine. Cuomo is sexy AF. There is something about him. There's definitely a magnetism that yeah. radiates. Power, maybe power. No, it ain't power. <laughs> it's not, it, 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 oh, no, it is. It, even it's though we know, even him. though we know he has status and some power, he comes off very the dad on Leave It to Beaver. I would love for Governor Cuomo, if not to be my man, to be my daddy. Like he just <laughs> seems like he would make a good couple. You think him and Kwa would make a good couple? Well, I know Kwa person. I think Kwa would run that damn man crazy. 
Um, <laughs> just to get her to myself. Um, but he's just, he just looks fun and loving. And yeah, he's he does. And, 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 you know, it, it's funny. I, I just connect with him. I do. No, I, I, I agree. agree. I would call, call on him. And and that, yeah. I like a quad in him would make a good couple because I I yeah. think that honestly, I, I mean it would be a very interesting couple, but it could work. If he made, so he must be single if she so took her awesome. shot. Oh, she took a real shot, honey. He's single, literally a whole. Lucia one said it too. Movie. All them Cuomo men, yeah, they some they they got yeah. like a um a charisma, a swag, a you know, it's yeah, like a, a thing, yeah. Yeah. But I'm yeah. married, and my husband gonna come up here and snatch me from my unit. <laughs> oh, really? That's right, Lindsay. Go on, get your wife, Lindsay. Hold on, hold on. Like, you never fantasized about Halle Berry and Delicious. Man, please. Anyway, whatever. I'm seeing y'all come in, he closing up his computer. What you looking at? <laughs> so let's take a while, a couple wild card moments. Lucia said Cuomo men as well. Um, and he is relatively newly single. So I don't know, Kwai might have to buy Lucia for Mr. Cuomo. Anybody got anything else they want to drop in? We're at an hour and 20 minutes. Anybody have oh, wow. anything that maybe we left out? Um, that you want to share? No, nothing. I will add. Are we? Is this our personal drop-ins or is yes, this general? Yes, absolutely. Yes, whatever, anything. So I'm gonna be a part of a conversation tomorrow. There's a, a um, Facebook live show. It's called Girl. It's called Girl Professionals. Oh. Chit chat, chew and collaboration. And so tomorrow oh, nice. chat is. I'm gonna be a part of that. There's gonna be four women on speaking. Some dynamic women. But I'm gonna be. Speaking about basically how you reclaim your life after experiencing a trauma, tragedy, oh, nice. to come out and keep moving. So I'm excited to be a part. But it's 7 p.m. tomorrow, Facebook Live. Again, oh, nice. Girl Professionals is the Facebook Live or Instagram post that you can follow. Dope, 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 dope. I love that, Christine. Dope, dope, dope. And that's right up your alley. Hey. Reclaim, what? Reclaim, recover. Reclaim, recover restore, again. and recover. Reclaim yes. your life, restore your spirit, and rec reclaim your spirit. Restore oh, your spirit, recover life, and reclaim your, your soul. That's it. Oh, yeah. wait. And actually, if I can do a cheap plug, Absolutely. Meet Your Match is coming back. Meet Your Match is coming back. The hey. yeah, Meet Your Match, Woo. Finding Love Under Quarantine. I'm so excited. It's coming back June 10th to my show, Love Rant. So we're looking to match um, couples from all across the country again. So men or women, if you want to be a part of Meet Your Match, Finding Love Under Quarantine, the world's largest speed dating event, please, please reach out to me. We're looking for you, dynamic singles. And let me say this, the couples that we did match for the first one, y'all, they are really still. It's working. They wow. know each other. Like literally we had nine. It's literally eight of them are lit. Like it's like I get chills thinking about it. Like that can make Good me get stuff. emotional. Literally oh, eight couples hey. are still getting to, y'all, that is like, Crazy. So you yeah, do love what it. doing over there. You ain't just scamming the girls out day money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my coaching is seventy five dollars an hour, and I'm gonna get no, it time not. It's a dollar a minute. Actually, it's wait, very expensive. Wait, I'm laughing. You did, Stacey. You did that. Your first one was. I can't wait, wait to watch the next one. Is oh. that? Yeah, you did that show, boo. Thank <laughs> you. No, I'm really <laughs> proud of that. Cause they're just. Is this I one mean, with Erica Thomas too? Um, no, this one won't be you hosted with Erica. Host? Erica's busy. You know she's running again, so she's busy. She's really running pulling. against uh, yeah. uh, Angela Stanton, right? Oh, hey. she is? I, I, well, I don't know, but it's for Senator John Conyers' seat. Is that the same seat? Uh -huh. No, no, no. no, no. Erica is I mean, John, John Lewis. Lewis. I'm sorry, John, John Lewis. Lewis. No, no, no. Erica's just running for her seat again. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Lucia yeah, yeah, yeah. Stacey, yeah. That's so fantastic. Erica is a state legislator. Yep. John Lewis is seated is a, in the US, U.S. Congress. So, those yes, are two different yeah. okay. 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 Yeah. So, yeah, coming see. back, I'm so excited about that. Like, to know yeah. that these people were at home, single, nothing to do, you know, just, and now they have company. And, yeah. and not company, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm just saying to know that they're still talking. That is a big deal. Like there are so many singles out there just 
trying to figure this thing out for real. Yeah, and people want and, love, oh, especially yeah. in quarantine. Wait a minute, let me and Nikki, let me just say this. I probably had so I've had two of these, so I'm mad that I couldn't give my own like platform, like really, and be so it's reclaim your power, restore <laughs> your spirit, and recover your life. So that's bad that I was on here like, damn, what is it? So, <laughs> Reclaim your power, restore your spirit. Reclaim your power, restore your spirit, and recover your life. So I like this. I said before we even get got started, I got real extra tipsy today. I think it's because I haven't really been eating as much because I've been renovating my house. So I had one little cocktail and I'm like, ooh, ooh. So y'all, this is real. I was like, dang, really? Okay, did you just really mess up your own platform? (laughs) No, we got it. And somebody said, Chris, that sounds really interesting. They're going to tune in. Our little Periscope is on fire too. Shout out to Periscope. Again, right. I'm sorry if you were watching on She Speaks Live and it, and it fell out. I'm going on ahead. Now that we got Funky Deneva on this mug, you know, uh, they shutting down servers and whatnot. So I'm going to pay for that little pri- private we server. We, we'll ride your, your coattails, Funky we Deneva. Sure will. Okay, we that's my baby. I love it. Chevy, anything you want to plug or share with the people before we get off? Hey. Hey, y'all put it down tonight. Cause y'all put it down tonight. I ain't really have to say too much tonight. You did too. You did too. What? What you tell me? Stop talking down on yourself. We held it down. Talk we nice to yourself, Chevy. Talk nice to yourself. Check me. Okay. But anyway, um, I have a lot of great things going on right now. Nikki, first of all, I want to say that the show that you're producing right now. People, the people don't know, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug it for you. This is about to be lit. Okay, oh, yeah. so y'all gonna tune in to She Speaks Live, y'all gonna tune in to Still Climbing, and we about to get this thing popping. Notice I said oh, she didn't gave the name. <laughs> well, it's a working right. title, right? It's a work, it's a working title, so it's not the actual official. Working title, don't quote me, but you feel my energy. Yeah, yes, Indeed. I feel your energy. <laughs> and you, right. we can catch you on YouTube, getting about a hundred thousand views a minute. Multiple times a day, I'm there. All things y'all, y'all want me find me where I get paid on the YouTube. Everything else is just, <laughs> just an extra little yin yin yang around the house. But we got a little tea, tea going on. Yeah. 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 Where can they find your tea? You better sell some tea. It might be somebody watching that want to buy some tea. I know that's right. Anybody looking, listen. Don't don't come out of this quarantine fat and ugly the same way you went into it. Okay. What's the verse? Better get you some of this CBD detox tea and come out fine. Just because Corona is here does not mean summer is canceled. Okay? Ah, you, know I mean? right. you better and get if you it. Make extra money, you can join my sales team and sell this tea, baby. It's selling like hotcakes. So check out my Instagram, click the link in the top, buy the tea, sell the tea, change your life. Let's and go. I'm tripping because we got a lot of YouTube viewers thanks to you. I'm sitting here looking at YouTube like, damn, YouTube usually be like, we got quite a few people watching. This thing is growing. So make sure yes. you guys register at shecfive.com. Please follow, subscribe. You probably already subscribed to Funky Deneva's YouTube. Chris, what's your YouTube? Do you have a YouTube? I don't. I gotta get in the know with the YouTube. You gotta get a YouTube. Say she got a YouTube? Yeah. Yes. Funky, it's, um, I know she does. Chevy is at I am Chevy Carter, right? Yes, that is correct. Somebody asked. Chevy with an I. And mine is just at Stacy S T A C I I J A E Johnson. Just my name. And we're at No Ego TV. So thank you guys for watching tonight. We were a little shorter than we were last week. Um, Next week we're gonna have some incredible topics for you guys. Thank you for um, supporting us. Um, I am working on some dope content that hopefully I'll be able to share with you really soon. Remember that next month is Gun Violence Awareness Month. So I'm excited about some of the conversations that we can have uh, around Mm -hmm. that. But this is smart, Mm -hmm. sexy, ambitious ass conversation. I'm Nikki Gilbert Daniels. That is Q Latham, Quentin Latham to be exact. That is Stacey J. Johnson, Just Date Girl. That is Chevy Carter at I Am Chevy Carter. That is Christine Beatty at Christine.bt and Funky Deneva's yes. handle, like y'all don't know, it is Miss Funky Deneva. Um, yes. May I invite the people to submit questions to us? to For us to. Yes, have please. These Absolutely. Submit questions, please. By all means, submit questions. You can submit them, she speaks live at gmail.com 
or in on our She Speaks Live Instagram handle, handle please follow at She Speaks Live on Instagram. And somebody said something to me, oh, all your hosts need to plug this channel into their YouTube for more viewers. Okay. That's what, okay. that's what Imani Spicy 13 told me. So Imani, since you got what suggestions, oh, okay. <laughs> she said, somebody said, I love, River Jones said, I love the value in the bra conversation. Yeah, it's, you know, just thinking and talking outside the box. Hi, River. Hi, River. See, come on, that's Chevy. Come on, Chevy. All right. <laughs> and somebody that asked me five times on Periscope, who's the woman in the middle box with the long braids? Her name is Chevy. And they asked me for your follow. She is our resident millennial. All right, yes. sexy people. We She's love y'all. She's gorgeous. Absolute little baby Whitney Houston. Okay. <laughs> you got a little Whitney vibe. Good night, everyone. Thank you guys for watching. Good I night. love and appreciate y'all. Good night, good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.